Hey guys, what's up? Chains of Domination is finally here, and what does that mean? Yes, the start of the much anticipated Arena Season 2. Well, in this video, we're going to be giving you all the information you need in order to give you the best possible start to the new season, including a look at race selection, talents, gear, soul binds, and much more. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skillcapped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide, including our world class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your fire mage gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find videos on how to deal damage, how to set up kills and win games, and exactly how to execute your spec's playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill capped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server, where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. As always, the first thing you're gonna need to do when creating your character is to select a race. Starting on the Alliance side, you've got two options, Human and Night Elf. Human has previously been a must-pick race for almost all classes, but with the metagame speeding up, Human is falling out of the limelight. The reason for this is that due to the racial will to survive, you're pigeonholed into using a relentless gladiator's brooch in order to gain the full benefit. When games are as fast as they currently are, not having a medallion to get out of important crowd control can be detrimental. However, Human does still remain a very good option, and in certain matchups will still continue to give you an edge. The alternative to Human, and what we believe to be the best race on the Alliance side, is Night Elf. Night Elf has one of the strongest overall racials in Shadow Meld. Shadow Meld, if used well, can be extremely impactful. It can be used to drop focus in order to secure crowd control, used to avoid important crowd control such as Cyclones, Polymorph, or even Kidney Shots if you're a real gamer, or even as a way to avoid high amounts of damage, shadow melding abilities like the Hunt or Chaos Bolts. Moving on to the Horde, there's only one race worth mentioning, Orc. Orc has been the staple Horde side race for some time now, and we're yet to see any balance changes to fix this and allow for more variation. But the combination of hardiness giving you a 20% reduction to all stun effects while also still having your gladiator's medallion makes them simply unrivaled. On top of that, Blood Fury also provides a very nice boost to your burst during combustion. Next up, we're going to be breaking down the standard talent tree, giving you the default talents and discussing any other optional or situational talents you may want to select. Kicking off at the level 15 row, our recommended choice is Firestarter. This is an incredibly solid pick, giving your Fireball and Pyroblast spells 100% critical strike chance when used on targets above 90% health. Why this is so strong is down to its synergy with the PvP talents Pyrokinesis and Tinder, helping to bolster your consistent damage whilst also reducing the cooldown of your combustion. Moving down to our next row, you guessed it, Shimmer. If you've played Mage, you would know how important Shimmer is to your playstyle. Landing crowd control without this isn't something you want to be trying to do. The ability to cast and then blink to either chase or avoid interrupts is just too strong to ever pass up. You could argue that dropping Shimmer for Blazing Soul could give you some advantage against compositions with stuns, but even then, we recommend you just stick to Shimmer. For our next row, we've got a tiny bit of diversity. The default here and what you should pick in most games is Rune of Power. Rune of Power is strong due to Combustion giving you an instant Rune of Power on use. You've then still got the option to utilize your casted Rune of Power for some additional burst during certain setups. Overall, a great talent and boost to your burst. The alternative that we mentioned though is dropping Rune of Power in turn for Encanter's Flow. Why you would want to do this is specifically against Hunters, as it's not always necessarily the case that you'll be able to use your Combustion at all. As a result, the additional damage from Encanter's Flow can help you secure kills, but only versus Hunters, and even then it's very rare. The level 35 row on the other hand is very set in stone. Flame On is hands down the best choice. This gives you an extra Fire Blast charge which has great synergy with your Conduit of Choice, Infernal Cascade, as well as Kindling. Also, with Fire Blast being off global, the ability to do 3 in short succession really pushes your burst to that next level. Moving down another tier, Ring of Frost is the go-to choice. One of Fire Mage's strengths is the ability to cast multiple schools of magic in order to crowd control enemies. Having Ring of Frost allows you to Dragon's Breath into Ring of Frost. If interrupted, you can then secure a Polymorph. The utility Ring of Frost brings is never worth sacrificing anything else on this row for. Our next tier is one that's extremely underwhelming. Every single talent on this row has very little positive impact on your gameplay. Flame Patch is essentially useless as you never want to be casting Flame Strike, and Conflagration causes your Ignite to spread and deal cleave damage, potentially breaking crowd control. As a result, the best of the worst is Living Bomb. Basically, you can control the cleave here. If you're not at risk of breaking crowd control, Living Bomb can provide you some added damage. The majority of the time though, you won't be utilizing this as the downsides far outweigh the small damage gain. And for our final row, we've actually got two viable options between Kindling and Meteor. 
Kindling should be your default pick for most situations even despite the nerfs. Basically, this in conjunction with our PvP talent Pyrokinesis allows you to offset your combustion from enemy trinkets. Getting your burst back that much sooner can help close out games, often winning in the second combustion. Meteor on the other hand is your all-in talent. This is great for when you expect games to be closed out in a singular combustion. A good example of where to take Meteor is when playing Rogue Mage 2v2 where you're aiming for a short game. Now moving into the PvP talents, Patch 9.1 has seen a rework to several talents with some being removed and even some new additions. We'll start by just providing you with a standard build that you can expect to take to most matchups. On screen now, you can see the three talents that make up the default setup. We'll break these down and talk about why they're good, and then talk about any situations you might want to swap some of these out. Our first default talent is Pyrokinesis. This is one you'll never want to swap out. Fireball reduces the cooldown of your combustion. Pair this up with Kindling and Firestarter and you have the reason why Fire Mage is so strong right now, which is the ability to get your combustion back very quickly. Even if you're being trained, having this combined with Firestarter still provides good value. The newest addition to your default talent setup is Ring of Fire. Since the removal of Cryptomania, it's opened up a talent slot and Ring of Fire fills that void nicely. This is a fantastic damage talent. Essentially, it's a Ring of Frost that does ridiculous damage. You can look to use this in two ways. Most mages aim to wait for a stun and then cast the Ring of Fire onto the stun target, putting the outer edge on the player. The other way you can use this is to trap enemies or yourself, as players often don't want to cross over due to how much damage this actually does. Then, the third default talent is going to be Flame Cannon. Flame Cannon synergizes very well with your Pyrokinesis and Kindling. Whenever you can, you stand still, stack up Flame Cannon, and use the increased range and damage to get extra fireballs off, reducing the cooldown of your combustion and doing surprisingly high sustained damage. Okay, so with our default talents locked in, when should you be looking to swap to alternatives? Well, to make this easier, we can instantly disregard a few PvP talents. Controlled Burn, World in Flames, and Prismatic Cloak all provide very little to no value and are not worth the talent slots. As for the other PvP talents, first of all we have Greater Pyroblast. Now this has received a few nerfs in recent times, now having a cooldown attached. It's very rare you'll want to play this, but it can be a very good niche pickup in one comp in specific, and that's Rogue Mage Double DPS 2v2. Having the pressure of this in the opener can often force cooldowns alone, and that's honestly the only reason and time that you'll want to consider this talent. And when using it, you'll want to replace Flame Cannon. One of the weaknesses of Flame Cannon is that you obviously need to remain stationary. This isn't something you can always look to do, and when you can't, the best talent to replace Flame Cannon with is Tinder. As we've mentioned a few times, Kindling and Pyrokinesis both work from fireball casts. Tinder just allows you to consistently get fireballs off even whilst being trained, so it acts as a good replacement for Flame Cannon in situations where you can't get much use out of it. And then last but not least, another alternative to Flame Cannon is going to be Netherwind Armor. This is a great defensive option versus any cleave, so think double melee composition and also jungle cleave. Alright guys, with both your talents and PvP talents out of the way, it's time to move on to Covenants. For Fire Mage, there is one Covenant which is head and shoulders above the rest, and that's Night Fae. As we know, Fire Mage is all about one thing, combustion. Shifting Power, the Night Fae Covenant ability, does wonders in helping you get combustion back alongside all of your other abilities. It works on literally all your abilities, so you can reduce the cooldown of your mobility, your interrupt, and even your defensives. And then, Mage is a slippery class in its own right due to Shimmer and its roots. Combine this with the added mobility from Night Fae's Covenant ability Soul Shape, and you essentially have an extra defensive cooldown to utilize in order to kite. And that's without even mentioning the perks of their Soul Binds, which is exactly what we're gonna cover now, as the first thing you'll be tasked with when picking your Covenant is selecting one of the three Soul Binds. Your Soul Bind of choice is going to be the Dream Weaver. Not only does this provide you with some of the best passives for mages, but also gives you access to a very optimal route for conduits, allowing you with a highlighted route to pick up 3 potency conduits, 2 endurance, and 1 finesse. This route will give you such passives as Pod Tender, which if you queued any arena in Shadowlands, you'll know how annoying this is. It can be healed, players can use defensives on it, and after 10 seconds, you'll be revived ready to fight another day. You also get Soothing Voice. This is a soul bind not many classes can make use of, but for mages ends up being one of the strongest passives in the tree. This is a 90% slow, which applies after your Polymorph, Frost Nova, and Dragon's Breath ends. Great for kiting, and great for crowd controlling healers for a few extra seconds. One of two new additions with 9.1 you begin access to is Waking Dreams. This is a fantastic way at helping you to survive in the current fast-paced meta, giving you a shield for 20% of your maximum health for 12 seconds when dropping below 80%. With only a 1 minute ICD, this can really help preventing those 100-0 situations you often see. The 
then finally, the last highlight is Dream Delver. Basically, this is just a 3% damage increase to the target you're hitting, and as Mage focuses purely on single targets, this gains a lot of value. And with an expanded Soulbind system comes more slots for conduits. Following this route, we gain access to two Endurance Conduits, one Finesse Conduit, but more importantly, three Potency Conduits. For the latter, we're gonna want to prioritize Inferno Cascade. This, despite the nerfs, remains to be your best damage conduit. After Inferno Cascade, our second potency conduit is Discipline of the Grove. This just enhances your Shifting Power Covenant ability, decreasing your cooldowns by up to an additional 7 seconds. And then at Renown 42, we'll want to be slotting in Controlled Destruction. Again, this is going on to boost your burst damage, increasing the damage of Pyroblast by up to 7%. Then, for the two Endurance Conduits, the highest priority remains to be Tempest Barrier. This, over the course of a game, does a ton of healing, giving up to 7% max health absorb every time you shimmer. To pair up with Tempest Barrier, for our second Endurance Conduit, you'll want Diverted Energy. This causes your barriers to heal you for up to 45% of the damage absorbed. Great synergy with our Legendary of Choice and adds a ton of bonus defense. And finally, for our last Finesse slot we gain access to at 49 Renown, you'll want to be putting in a Flow of Time Conduit. This flat reduces the cooldown of Shimmer by up to 3.6 seconds, and as we know how important Shimmer is, you can see why this is so good. Also, some very nice synergy between our Endurance Conduit Tempest Barrier which leaves our completed Dreamweaver Soulbind tree with all conduits selected looking like so. Next, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about how to correctly gear your Fire Mage in patch 9.1. PvP gear now scales up when inside of PvP combat, up to a maximum of 259 eye level when at duelist level. Meaning, all of your best gear will be obtainable from PvP, bar one or two exceptions for you min-maxers, but we'll get into that shortly. The easiest way to gear up though is to know your stat priority. This way, you can easily judge if a piece of gear is an upgrade or not. For Fire Mage, it's versatility and haste on equal values followed up by crit and mastery. But there are certain haste breakpoints you want to aim for, ideally 29.5% haste. Once you achieve this, you'll be able to Dragon's Breath Polymorph targets using the Gladiator's Relentless Bruce Trinket. Then, as for trinket choices, we still want to be sticking with double PvP ones purely for the additional versatility 2 set. If you're any race bar human, you'll want a Gladiator's Medallion humans will want Relentless. Then, for your second trinket, the new Unchained Gladiator Shackles acts as a stronger version of the old Maledict, applying a heavy healing absorb whilst doing some very high damage, insane for the setup playstyle of Mage. And if you really need the added defense, an emblem is still a viable alternative despite the nerf. Whilst you can do very well with a full set of PvP gear, something we're not too sure on is the impact of domination sockets inside of PvP. It's confirmed they are nerfed by 50% and that the socket bonus won't work, but with domination gear from the final two bosses being at 246 eye level on heroic and 259 on mythic, the latter is equal to the highest PvP gear obtainable. And if pieces have versatility on them, they become very desirable no matter the strength of domination sockets, as that way you're essentially getting a socket with no drawback. So if you're able to access these items eventually they would become best in slot as long as domination sockets remain active in PvP. The heroic version though is equal to that of 1600 rated arena gear, so whether these pieces are good will purely be based on the strength of the domination shards. But with shards like the Shard of Kier being in the game and a throwback to resounding protection, they could end up having a pretty big impact, but we'll keep you updated on this throughout the season. What we haven't touched on yet for gearing though is your legendary. There are a few new additions, all of which are covenant based. These, although unable to be unlocked at the time of this video, are all set to be very lackluster for PvP. So for your legendary choice, not much has changed. It still remains to be the incredibly strong Triune Ward. Triune Ward gives you the effect of all three barriers, so you get your Blazing Barrier, Prismatic Barrier, and Ice Barrier. Something not everybody knows is that you also gain the passive benefit of every barrier, so you'll get reduced duration on magic effects, reduced magic damage from Prismatic Barrier, and a slow from Ice Barrier, alongside the standard effects from your Blazing Barrier. As for which socket to craft Triune Ward on, ideally you'll want it on chest for the highest stat budget. For your missives, it's of course Haste and Versatility. Whilst we recommend you to always craft Triune Ward first as it will be the default for almost all of your games, there is of course those rare games where you're not the focus. In these situations, the best damage option is Disciplinary Command. This increases the damage of your critical strikes by 20%. As for which slot, Bracers with again haste and versatility missives. Last up, we've got Macros. This section will just cover any important macros you need as a Fire Mage. First and foremost, Focus or Arena 123 macros are vital for interacting with a specific player on the enemy team no matter who you're targeting. You'll need these for a selection of abilities if you want to play at the optimal level. A great way to do this if you go to Focus route is with modifiers. The macro on screen now will cause your Polymorph Bind if you hold Shift to instead do it on your Focus target. But however you opt to do these macros, whether it's Arena 123 or Focus, is personal preference. Ideally though, you'll want one for Polymorph, Counterspell, and Spell Steal. 
Aside from general focus or arena 1 to 3 macros, there are a few other must-have macros. You'll want an easy way to remove curses from your teammates. This is even more important now with the addition of the shackle trinket, but this is essential for quickly removing hexes and warlock curses. Then, you'll also want a separate bind for cancelling important buffs such as spell steal. This is important in mage vs mage mirrors as this will remove the option of the enemy mage spell stealing the buff back. With Kleptomania being removed, this is less important if you have a lot of buffs but still worth having. Another cancel aura you'll want is one to quickly remove your ice block. This is good for when you're using block offensively and saves you from trying to flap around clicking off the buff. We recommend putting it inside Fireball to save yourself an extra bind. Then, last but not least, another bind saver is the all-in-one combustion macro. Simply putting your chosen unused trinket paired up with the blood fury ratio. Alright guys, that about does it for this one. Hope this helped and as always, be sure to like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more up-to-date PvP content to help you through the new season. Remember though, make sure to head on over to Skillcapped if you're interested in continuing your learning by checking out our world-class mage courses made together with some of the best mages in the game. For now though, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.